Greetings! It is I, Herbert Erpaderp, and it seems yet another month has passed, and therefore I'll answer some questions, because Ask a Herbert Erpaderp happens at the start of the month, and that's what this is. First up, East Germany says, What video game console, if any, did you grow up with? What games did you play on it, and what are your fondest memories? Now, I'm old so I'm pretty crap and not very good at remembering things, but I'm pretty sure the first console we got was an Atari 7800. Was it 7600 or 7800? It was something like that anyway. It had asteroids built into it which I thought was pretty cool, and I don't really remember many games from it because I was quite young and most of them to be honest aren't that memorable. I do remember playing a lot of River Raid and there was one monster sort of game where you would climb towers, I think it was Rampage. I played that, River Raid and Asteroids quite a bit. After that we had the Sega Master System 2, with Alex Kidd in Miracle World built in, and I can still hear the theme music in my head when I think about it. I think, though I'm not sure, that came bundled with Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I also remember having Bubble Bobble and a Ghostbusters game of some sort with that. I had a bunch of other games that I've forgotten too, but because we were poor, we didn't really have a lot of games. But we did rent a lot of them from the video shop. Remember video shops? They also had video games. I guess we sort of skipped the next generation, like the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis, which is what they called the Mega Drive in the US. So next came PlayStation and Nintendo 64. Somehow we had both of those. I rather enjoyed Twisted Metal and Vigilante 8 and I guess that's why those are the first to come to mind. We did also have Goldeneye. I think Goldeneye was pretty much obligatory for the Nintendo 64, and that's probably the main game we played with friends. I'm sure there's a lot of games I just don't remember, and I don't think I have any especially fond memories of any of the games that I played, but I know I had a lot of good times. I haven't had a console of my own since then, we got a PC somewhere around the PlayStation times, and towards the end of the 90s I was more interested in being a no good punk and playing music and stuff, and I would have had to buy my own console if I wanted one, so I didn't. So I guess that's a history of Herbert Herbert's console having-ness. Trekan Belovich said, It seems you built the Jagdtiger as just a 15mm kit. Any plans to do a Jagdtiger in a bigger scale? You know, I think you're right. I didn't have any specific plans to buy a larger Jagdtiger, but now I kind of want to. I am going to pick up a few smaller kits, most likely a bunch of first to fight kits, so maybe I'll look for a nice Jagdtiger in a larger scale as well. Spanish Boy said, How do you weather your armoured vehicles? Like, what products? You know, sometimes I do make videos about this kind of thing. You never paint anything, Herbert! Shut up and I don't like paint models and then not make videos about them, so what you see in those videos is what I use. Usually just enamel effects, and I guess the acrylic chipping and acrylic washes I use are also weathering. I guess most of the painting is really kind of weathering, if you think about it, but like I said, what I use in my videos is what I use. I did, long ago, try powders, but I didn't really like them, especially not for wargaming pieces. I think that was before I started making videos though. Hercheon said, Would you ever consider a multi-stage radio controlled model like a Hercules that lands and a scorpion drives out the back, or a tank that lays a bridge and then drives over it? I mean, I would consider them, I'm considering them right now, but they would probably be a bit outside the realm of what's practical for me, especially cost wise. The Hercules idea sounds rad as hell though, but I don't think I would have space to land something like that in my local park, you know? Maybe an airdropped tank that parachutes down would be cool, so that you don't have to land the plane, but then where would the plane even take off from? Hmm. A bridge laying tank would also be awesome, and if I had tons of spare cash I would be more into getting RC stuff, but I do already have one RC tank, a T-3485, and that gets almost zero use. So I'd really prefer to use the hobby budget I do have on stuff I would use. Trekan Belovich said, Is a 3D printer something you're interested in? Well, yes, but kind of like the RC things, I'd probably use it a whole bunch at first because it's a new novelty, but then not really have anything to use it for on the regular. They do seem to be getting cheaper and better, which is obviously cool, and it certainly increases the likelihood of me buying one, though I would have to find somewhere to put it if I were to give it serious consideration. 
John O31 said, If a hitman is a girl, is it even a hitman anymore? Is it a hit woman? I guess it's a hit woman? Hit person? I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask them. Maybe assassin would be a better term. More gender neutral. Spanish boy said, Most popular dog breed in Australia? Good dogs. That's all dogs, Herbert! Hmm, that is true. I had to google it because it's not something I would just happen to know. It seems the most popular dog in Australia is the Cavoodle, followed by the Labrador and Golden Retriever. That's according to a pet insurance company, so I guess they would know. It kind of surprised me, I would have assumed like a Staffordshire Terrier or something like that. Trekan Belovich said, Are you planning to repaint your N-scale model locomotives and or wagons, or do some weathering on them? I don't plan on repainting the locomotives, at least not right away. I mean, I might want to do something silly down the road or something like that, so never say never. And I don't really plan on repainting the rolling stock either. I'm sure some will disagree, but I think most of that stuff comes decorated fairly nicely, and painting a locomotive that costs hundreds of dollars that already looks pretty good is kind of… not really sure what the right word to use is, if I just don't want to do it, unless I really, really have to. I do plan on, actually I already have, bought some undecorated wagons, because one, they're cheaper than decorated rolling stock, and two, more importantly, I want to do some of my own fictitious and, obviously, very sensible private owner paint schemes, which I think will be a lot of fun. I do also plan on doing weathering because, well, models may come nicely painted, they're usually way too neat and tidy to be convincing, at least in most situations. I also plan on doing videos on that sort of thing down the track. Get it? Down the track because trains? Ha 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 ha. Major General Bunk said, I've been taking a break from the hobby for a couple of months as I look for work. What's the longest recent break you've taken from the hobby? I guess it depends on what you define as a break. I haven't taken a real break since whenever it was I stopped for a couple of months, and that was probably more than five years ago by now. I rather needed that at the time, and I haven't really felt a need to take that sort of a break for a while now. And that's probably because, I think, I'm doing things a bit more healthy now. I don't do hobby related stuff every day, and usually the only time I'm building models is while I'm streaming, which is normally two days out of the week. I do spend more time than that working on the videos, but it's kind of like a different hobby, if that makes sense. There's enough variety that I don't feel like I'm doing the same thing all the time and burning out. I also try to keep a buffer of sorts with videos, so if I want I can do nothing for a week and still put a video out. I wanted to spend more time streaming and doing other things I like, like music, and spending time with my friends and people I value. I guess the answer is I haven't really taken an extended break for a long time, but I kind of take a break most weeks. It's not really a break I guess, it's just actively trying not to burn out. Also, good luck with your job searching, I know how much that sucks. Hopefully you can find something that isn't too soul crushing. Trekan Belovich said, Milky tits or egg shitter? I really enjoy that this had some confused emote reactions, whatever those are called. But how dare you try to make me choose between my beloved pets, which I care for greatly and look after diligently. I choose both. And all of the other ones too, whatever their names are. For those unaware, Milky Tits and Egg Shitter were animals Barnaby and I captured in our raft gameplay. Their names are descriptive and probably Barnaby's fault. Spanish Boy said, Opinions on the Yugoslavian Milkja? Milikonarara uniforms? <laughs> I am terrible at reading. There's a couple of examples shown here. I'm assuming these are police, and it's not really a very clear look at the uniforms, but the first thing I thought was the ones with the white lower sleeves look kind of weird, like maybe their arms are in casts or something like that. Other than that, I don't really have much of an opinion. I think I answered something like this last month or the month before, I'm just not much of a uniform guy really. In the comment section of last month's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, Martin Gotham said, What will a Crusader with a T-34 turret look like, and would you attempt to model one? Do you mean the Soviet T-34, or the American one? I suspect the American one would be way too big, but the Soviet one might actually fit. I don't know the turret ring sizes of either tank, so I couldn't really tell you. 
They're probably not the same size though. I've no idea what it might look like, though I'm assuming kind of silly and a bit weird. I guess I could try it with some Flames of War kits, cause I do have both, but unfortunately I'm too lazy to get them out. Either way it's not really something I've ever thought about before. Is this something that has a basis in reality or is it just a random idea? Mark Ferguson said, What do you think about the trend in large scale armour models? I've seen reviews and builds by other YouTube modellers of 16th scale tanks. Lots of detail, including moulded in cast steel textures and weld beads. But who has display space for more than one or two? I haven't really noticed it as a trend, but to be fair, I wouldn't likely notice if anything was a trend. I just don't really keep my finger on the pulse of that kind of thing. I think large scale models are really cool. Armour or trains or anything really. I did build the 16th scale ammo Panzer 1 Breda a while ago. I really liked that kit, and it was the first time I've done individual track links that weren't fiddly in a size related way. The detail on that was really nice right out of the box, and at that size you can add so much stuff that just wouldn't appear on smaller models. Adding things like cast steel textures, if they're not present by default, also makes a lot more sense at that scale. As you said though, who has space for those? I certainly don't. I built the Panzer 1, which is a very small vehicle, and it's rather big. I think I would need to buy a big shed if I was to regularly build that kind of thing. And well, if I could, I would. Steve Stevenson, presumably in response to my saying that services like the post office should be government run companies and it's not beneficial for them to be private, for profit businesses. The response was, lol, why should the post office be run by the government, they're god awful at it, communism doesn't work. I'm pretty sure this is meant to be a troll, but I mean the joke that Americans don't know what words like communism mean and think they're a synonym for bad does have a basis in reality, and I am assuming you're an American, so maybe you're not trolling. Anyway, I really feel like education needs more funding, the world over. Martin Gotham said, have you thought about or tried a pin wash with oil paints? I have, though I'm not sure I ever did so on video. But I have, in the past, made my own washes with oils, pin and otherwise. That is actually the only way I've used oils so far, and there are plenty of other oil weathering techniques I'd like to try. I think they'd be really good for doing heavy streaking for example, but that's not the question is it? I do often use enamel washes and while well, they're not the same thing, as I understand it, the chemical properties that make them different are beyond me, but for my purposes they're close enough to the same thing and they are used in pretty much the same way. I just prefer to use enamels. I know it's not hard to mix an oil wash, but it is always just going to be easier to open a bottle of pre-mixed enamel wash. I'm sure that will upset the people who've decided that oils are god and anything else is wrong, but that's fine. They can be upset. All that said, I have been thinking about getting some high quality oils and trying those out. In the past I've only used very cheap ones, and I'm kind of curious to see how much of a difference that would actually make. It's not a priority or anything though, and I'll be using enamels for the foreseeable future. Ok, that's all the questions, so I might as well stop giving answers. Let's go and have a look at some of the modelling work that's been shared over on the discord server in the last month. Peter Renko shared this T-54B, which as you can see has been painted and weathered really nicely. It's Peter Renko's first time trying a winter camouflage, and I think it's really good. You could probably hide this in a wintry place quite well. This model is entirely painted with a brush, which I think goes to show that you don't need an airbrush to get great results. Also, the model is in 72nd scale from ammo. Awesome. Sneaky Zaku shared this large robo friend. Actually, I'm not sure if it is a friend or an enemy or, or what. It's a Bandai high grade 144th scale Marasai? Marasai? I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway, it's from Gundam, which I'm clearly very unfamiliar with. This is painted in the colours of Goof? Gauf? Goof? I don't know which is which, but I certainly prefer Goof. So I don't know anything about Gundam, that much is obvious, but I do know that I really like this. Especially the chipping effects, it looks really good. Hope for the best shared this tiny little space marine. He's a precious little boy. This is a 3D printed 15mm scale shooty man, and I really like the purple colour, it looks fantastic. 
hope for the best says it took about two hours less to paint this than the full-sized model. The model is seen here with a regular sized marine, or maybe it's a giant marine in 15mm scale. How can we tell? Awesome work. Dermax is working on a grim Dark Souls conversion, and I'm assuming that's a conversion to represent something from a Souls game, the Dark One most likely, and not a grim Dark conversion of some Souls. I couldn't tell you what parts this conversion involves, but that sword looks like it's being stabbed right into some rock. I'm not sure if that's just blue tack to hold the sword in place, but it looks like a rock being stabbed, which I think is cool. Anyway, this looks pretty interesting, and I can't wait to see it painted. Yantima shared this rather nice looking BF109 E4, which is sitting, presumably waiting for that little bomb to be loaded. Is it a bomb? Or is it a drop tank? I don't know, I'm not a planesman. Either way, it's a very well done plane, and I rather enjoy this sort of angular camo pattern that some German planes had, whatever that's called. It's very nicely done. For those interested, the kit is a 30 second scale model from Edward. Okay, so that's all the models for this month, and also ask a herpet herpet up for the month. It will be back again next month though, so if you've got a question that only a herpet herpet up can answer, do questions like that even exist? Probably. Anyway, if you want a question answered, put it in the comment section below, or the appropriate channel on Discord. As always, a big thank you to everybody who asks questions and shares their modelling work. It is still one of my favourite things to just see what everybody else is doing. It's quite motivating. Of course, a very big thank you to my patrons also. Your support is very helpful and greatly appreciated. And of course, thanks to everybody who watches my videos and streams. That's also really important. Links to my stuff can be found in the description below, and I'll be back soon. So until then, take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.